Little Church. This coming Sunday is the second week of Advent. We are recording this service from Emsworth Church and Pastoral Centre, which is found on the border between Hampshire and West Sussex. St Digital Church has developed over time and we would always value your comments and any suggestions how you would like us to go forward. If you would like us to pray for you and alongside you, there is a dedicated and confidential email address. Also, if you enjoy these services, please subscribe, which supports and indeed helps our profile. We come with a prayer of approach. Here we are, Lord. Your grace has called us and we come to worship you. Come amongst us, holy Advent God. Amen. We sing as we're able, Advent candles tell their story. So let's come to God with a prayer. Let us pray. Light of the world, this Advent season comes to us as an annual reminder that you are not a God of distance, of high heavens and of power. Rather, you are a God of presence and of poverty. Light of the world, who appears through star, through angel, and as a baby in the familiar Christmas story, show us again the way we should go, the message we need to hear, the encounter we need to have. Show me, show us, show the world, Emmanuel, God with us. Light of the world, in the darkness of our own lives, shine your eternal light. Forgive us, love us, set us free, we pray. Light of the world, come amongst us as we worship you, knowing ourselves to be a light of your kingdom of light. And in this week of fairy lights, candles and winter wonderlands, bring your eternal, unwavering light that we might see peace on earth and every person's potential might be fulfilled. Amen. And so we share together in whatever tongue, 
is our first language and whatever form of this prayer you use as we share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Prophet Isaiah speaks of the hopes of the Jewish people of the time. We worship a God who is safe and steady, loving and understanding. In our Gospel lesson, Mark tells us about a prophecy shared by John the Baptist, who is telling the people all about what life will be like when Jesus comes. He says there is one coming, one who is coming later, who is greater than I, I am not good enough even to kneel down and untie his sandals. I baptise you with water, but the one who is coming will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Imagine you were one of the people listening to John speak on that day. Would you believe what he was saying? Remember, Jesus is not on the scene yet, but we know that he is not coming alone. We are asked to get ready. We are asked to watch. We are asked to wait. And so words from the book of Isaiah and then from Mark's Gospel. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O God, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. 
he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. And then our Gospel from St. Mark, beginning to read at chapter 1 and verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. So John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean region and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John, who was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God for those two lessons of Scripture. May those words be blessed as we ponder upon it. But first we sing. We sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, as we ponder upon those words, that lesson from the prophet Isaiah, those words found at the beginning of Mark's Gospel, give us ears to hear, grace to receive, and a willingness to respond. Come, Emmanuel. Come and speak to our souls. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone who has any understanding of Old Testament prophet and prophecy, it is often a message of doom and gloom. For example, the prophet Micah declaring to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Isaiah chapter 1 describes the offspring who do evil, sounding not unlike modern prophets of doom as they speak about a broken Britain, often painting a picture of an entire generation that no longer feels integrated into society or welcomed in our communities. Whilst prophecy of the terrible consequences of our actions no doubt has its place, the simple, powerful first verse of Isaiah chapter 40 reads, Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. This text expresses something very different, something altogether more positive it is a direct instruction, almost a command, a message calling for a response from the community of readers. It is the repeated comfort. We can see something of the desperation of this cry by the prophet. The writer of Isaiah chapter 40 clearly recognised that there was a great need for comfort at the time of writing. And today, as we near the end of 2023, we know what it is to live in a world that needs comforting. Ours is a world where war continues to rage in the Middle East, where the inequality a malnutrition of poverty continues for millions of families. Where there is still homelessness across developed and developing countries. Where we have a higher number of slaves than ever in human history. And as we enter the season of Advent, where rampant consumerism without regard for ethics is on display at every corner. Alongside that, perhaps many of us have a growing sense that we live in a spirituality bereft of society. The issues on this, on this list, look very daunting. But Uzziah, in that verse, does not instruct us to sort the world out or to fix everything ourselves. Rather, the prophet cries, Comfort, 
O oh, comfort my people. We are called to give support and love, not find overnight cures for a wounded world. Comfort can be found in a peaceful moment shared, in a hand of love offered, in painting an image of hope. The powerful closing verse of Isaiah 40 demonstrates exactly the kind of hope that a Christian community can often follow a fallen world. Those who wait for the Lord find a renewal of strength, a faith in a power beyond any of the forces of oppression on this planet. This is the authority behind the prophet's instruction to comfort my people. This is the power of our God. David Foster Wallace an American writer and thinker, recognised that as human beings we have other options to those most obviously provided by this world. He famously said, it is within your power to experience a crowded, loud, slow, consumer-type situation as not only meaningful but sacred on fire with the same force that lit the stars. As Christians, we believe in a God who created the universe, but also continues to move within that creation. Therefore, as we experience the everyday, even the everyday of long queues for the tills, and overcrowded trains, we also experience the eternal, the heavenly one. That is the experience John the Baptist points to, points to by preparing a way for Jesus, not providing a solution or fixing the problem himself, but making a way for the Saviour pointing towards the one more powerful than I. John is a radical. He is one who brings the challenge, but also a message of comfort, bringing news of transformation to a world that needed to change. Can we do the same? Can we be a part of that change? Part of the role of the Christian is to be a comforter to a broken world, is to inhabit that spirit of John the Baptist, to show people that they have other options. We are called by the prophet Isaiah that in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord to open up a passage to healing through the redeeming power of God. This is not a project we engage in critically or pilously, but tenderly, showing people the comfort of love. We believe that the sufferings of this world are not the limit of our experience, because there is equality promised. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. In the darkening world of rising inequality, of sex slaves and war, unemployment and media exploitation, of conscious consumerism and increased secularism. Isaiah chapter 40 offers an alternative 
a different narrative that speaks into 21st century Britain as it did into exiled Israel almost 2,600 years ago. Amongst the inequality, inequality of this world, there is a God who is beyond oppression, beyond worldly forces of any kind. And this God will make himself known to us at the end of all things. We believe in a time when the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. Our challenge as people of faith in 2023 is to convey the empowering comfort that this message brings into a world that does not know or indeed feel it. Is there someone you could comfort this week? Do you have a comforting message to bring to family and friends during this Advent season? How will you point people to the possibility of change in the way that John the Baptist does? How will you create a space for the Christ to come into the wilderness, into your lives, anew, afresh? Thanks be to God. Amen. So we pause for a moment and in the silence we reflect on those words from the prophet Isaiah, on those words from the prophet of John the Baptist. Comfort, oh comfort my people. sing wild and lone the prophet's voice. We come with our prayers and there will be words in the bolder type for us to share in if we so wish. 
Let us join together in our prayers of intercession. Our loving parent, God who can be mother as well as father, grant us the ability to be constantly aware that we are always in your presence. You are the ground of our being. We thank you for your presence in the world, that in our pain and anguish, dance and song, you are there. You are the ground of our being, everything that is. We remember those for whom life seems unbearable. For those whose spirit weighs them down near death. May they find in you a hope that will sustain them. You are the ground of our being. Everything that is, is because of you. We thank you for the gift which enables us to see and hear, to think. To think and to feel and smell. for all who are suffering, the poverty and oppression of our sisters and brothers everywhere. May your spirit ever move us to bring their lives before you in love, in action and in prayer. You are the ground of our being. Everything that is, is because of you. May we ever be the expression of your presence in the world. And now, let those who will, lift up their prayers for the church and the world. We name in the presence of our Advent God those who give us cause for concern, those who we have promised to pray for, and those who are upon our hearts and minds this very moment. O oh God, we have come before you bringing our hopes and our fears. We have come because you have called us that we might experience fresh your grace and peace. So bless us, we pray, with your loving grace and your eternal peace, this day and forevermore. Amen.
go out and meet a God who is already out there. Step forward and find a Christ who is amongst us. Be bold and discover a spirit who is willing to take risks. As you prepare, may the Christ child make himself known to you in each and every day. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love and all who you seek to love this day and forevermore. Amen.